The original Pikmin sees Captain Olimar fighting for his life on a strange planet, with his only pals being a bunch of weird carrot guys who are all imprinted on him. Pikmin 2 sees Captain Olimar being sent back to the same strange planet immediately after returning to Hokotate, in order to save his company from Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Using the same weird carrot guys, Captain Olimar and the equally weird Captain Louie are tasked with plundering the planet of all its valuables, even if that means massacring the native flora and fauna. Repulsed by this mission, Olimar decides to conscript as few Pikmin as possible into what is essentially indentured servitude. But how many is that? How many Pikmin does it take to beat Pikmin 2? In order to answer this question, we need to first address what it actually asks. Namely, how we define beating Pikmin 2. Because, technically, there are two win conditions. Paying off the debt and collecting all 201 treasures. However, since you can't collect every treasure without first paying off the debt, I've decided to split the challenge into two segments, paying off the debt and collecting every treasure. I will sprout only as many Pikmin as is necessary to pay off the debt, then I will sprout more Pikmin as necessary to collect every treasure. This way I can avoid any semantics and technicalities and ensure I do this challenge once and do it right. And like in my Pikmin 1 video, I will be doing this challenge without losing a single Pikmin, as Olimar would never be able to live with himself if even a single Pikmin died in order to accomplish a purely economic goal. With that out of the way, let's get started. Day 1 is very uneventful. After a rough landing in the Valley of Repose, both Olimar and Louis find red Pikmin and use the weight of 15 of them to crush a paper bag in order to reconvene. We end up sprouting a grand total of 20 red Pikmin and use our poor conscripted pals to carry the Courage Reactor back to the ship. Satisfied with our first day pillaging, the ship has us blast into lower orbit, where we see we've acquired 280 Pokos and sprouted 20 Pikmin. Day 2 has has us return to the Valley of Repose. We immediately sprout an additional 15 red Pikmin, as there's a paper bag that requires 35 Pikmin to crush. After killing a dwarf red Bulborb, we find the second treasure of the Valley of Repose, the Utter Scrap, and bring it back to the ship. The Pikmin then destroy a nearby wall, and we discover the first cave in the game, the Emergence Cave, which we enter. On the first sublevel, we find the Quenching Emblem in the Citrus Lump. On the second sublevel, we find the Spherical Atlas, an incredibly tantalizing prize, yet we don't have enough Pikmin to obtain it. We continue onwards and discover a couple Violet Candy Pop Buds, and turn 10 of our Red Pikmin into Purple Pikmin, the bodybuilders of the species. With these heavy weights, we carry the Spherical Atlas back to the ship and unlock the Awakening Wood. We leave the Emergence Cave, having collected all three treasures and acquiring 502 Pokos. The the ship once again makes us call it a day, and we blast off, having acquired 672 Pokos, sprouted 15 Pikmin, and unlocked a new area. And, regrettably, this is the last day where we will sprout Pikmin. Until we pay off the debt, that is. Meaning we're gonna have to make over 9,000 Pokos with only 35 Pikmin. On day 3, we journey to the newly discovered Awakening Wood. We take all our Pikmin and kill the two dwarf red Bulborbs, as well as the red Bulborb, to clear the way so that the Sunseed Berry can get back to the ship safely. We kill a couple female shear grubs, then get our Pikmin to work on the burgeoning spider warts. These plants have berries needed to make ultra spicy sprays, which greatly increase the speed of Pikmin and the amount of damage that they do. As the Pikmin start carrying the berries to the ship, the Sunseed Berry makes it back. We have about half our Pikmin start to destroy the black wall by the burgeoning spider warts, while the other half collect berries. A few moments later, I realized our Pikmin weren't flowered and took them to the grass by the ship in order to flower them. Flower Pikmin work and move faster, which is incredibly helpful. We return them to breaking the wall and harvesting berries. Eventually, the wall falls and we kill both a cloaking burrow net and a creeping chrysanthemum. Just past there, we find the hole of beasts, which we enter. On the first sublevel, we find the Stone of Glory. On the second sublevel, we find two more Violet Candy Pop Buds, which we use to convert ten more of our red Pikmin into purple Pikmin. On the third sublevel, we're introduced to Fire Geysers, which our red Pikmin can take care of no problem. We find the Strife Monolith and the Cosmic Archive, then descend to the fourth sublevel. Here we find the Dream Architect and the Luck Wafer. On the fifth sublevel, we're introduced to our first boss, the Empress Bullblax. She's not hard, just make sure to whistle your Pikmin back before she has a chance to shake them off. She drops the prototype detect which gives us the treasure gauge, a device that shows if any treasures are nearby. We leave the Hole of Beasts, having collected all six treasures and acquiring 1,136 Pokos. After returning to the surface, we run over to this paper bag, which we can now crush due to the additional purple Pikmin we sprouted in the Hole of Beasts. We kill this cloaking burrow net, then discover the White Flower Garden, and enter it. 
On the first sublevel, we find the alien billboard. On the second sublevel, we find the petrified heart and the drought ender. On the third sublevel, we discover ivory candy pop buds, which we use to turn 10 of our red Pikmin into white Pikmin. Using their X ray vision, we find the super stick textile. On the fourth sublevel, we are introduced to poison generators, which only white Pikmin can dispose of. Here we find the survival ointment and the toxic toadstool. The fifth and final sublevel has a burrowing snaggard as the boss. By using an ultra spicy spray and throwing Pikmin at its head, we can kill it in only two cycles. The burrowing snaggard drops the five man knapsack, a deceptively useful upgrade that will have its time in the limelight in a little while. We leave the white flower garden, having collected all seven treasures and acquiring 612 pokos. The next thing we do is take our ten white Pikmin and have them start work on the poison wall that's over by the Hole of Beasts. With the remaining 25 Pikmin, we have them collect more berries. Once the wall falls, we kill this creeping chrysanthemum and discover the geographic projection. Not having enough time to carry this back to the ship today, we start work on the nearby bridge as the 10 second countdown begins, finishing it right in the nick of time. We blast off into lower orbit, having acquired 1,918 Pocos and sprouting 10 white Pikmin today. Day 4 sees us returning to the Awakening Wood. We start by taking 9 of our white Pikmin over to the Poison Wall that's by the White Flower Garden. Then we put 1 white Pikmin and 3 purple Pikmin to work on the Pilgrim Bulb, which is buried underground. We kill this yellow Wallywog, then carefully toss our 5 red Pikmin across the pond so that they can work on this bridge as the remaining purple Pikmin carry back the geographic projection. After the Pilgrim Bulb gets back to the ship, we take the lone white Pikmin to work on the Poison Bridge that's right next to the bridge the red Pikmin had been working on, which is now completed. Those red Pikmin get tossed onto the geographic projection. Eventually, the poison wall is felled and the geographic projection makes it back to the ship, unlocking the perplexing pool. We take all our Pikmin over to the two bridges and throw the rest of our white Pikmin onto the poison bridge. We kill a second yellow Wallywog, finish the bridge, and avoid a burrowing snagger in order to start destroying the wall that blocks the snagger hole. After the wall falls, we don't enter the cave, instead choosing to harvest more berries. Just past the poison wall that we destroyed today is a burgeoning spiderwort plant that contains ultra bitter berries, which can be used to make ultra bitter sprays. These sprays can immobilize enemies and are incredibly helpful for this challenge given how few Pikmin we have. While in the area, we also carry the chance totem back to the ship. We end the day with an additional ultra spicy spray and one ultra bitter spray, which is a good emergency backup in case we find an especially tough customer. We blast off, having acquired 355 pokos today. Day 5 has us once again returning to the Awakening Wood. We start the day off by collecting an additional Ultra Spicy and Ultra Bitter Spray, then enter the Snagret Hole. On the first sublevel, we find the Crystallized Telekinesis and the Leviathan Feather. On the second sublevel, we find the Taste Sensation and Combustion Berry. On the third sublevel, we find the Meat Satchel. On the fourth sublevel, we find Cupid's Grenade, the Heavy Duty Magnetizer, and the Crystallized Telepathy. On the fifth sublevel, we find the Emperor Whistle and the Crystallized Clairvoyance. On the sixth sublevel, we find the Triple Sugar threat in the saliva tricks. However, because of the water on this floor and our lack of blue Pikmin, we are unable to obtain both the science project and the stupendous lens for the time being. Technically, you're supposed to use blue Pikmin to access this cave in the first place, but we don't have the luxury of being able to sprout even a single blue Pikmin, so we'll be back to this cave in the future. On the seventh and final sublevel, we fight the Pileated Snagret, using one ultra spicy spray and both our ultra bitter sprays, and obtain the Justice Alloy. We leave the Snagret hole, having collected 13 of the 15 treasures and acquiring 1,222 pokos. Above ground, we spend the rest of the day harvesting berries and end up obtaining two more of each spray. We blast off, having acquired 1,222 pokos today. Day 6 has us visiting the perplexing pool for the first time. After seeing yellow Pikmin off in the distance that we will ignore for quite a while, we find and enter the Citadel of Spiders, a cursed cave whose walls will be stained red with the blood of the innocent in the near future. On the first sublevel, we find the Love Nugget. On the second sublevel, we find the Creative Inspiration, the Paradoxical Enigma, and the Lip Service. On the third sublevel, we find the Patience Tester and the Memorial Shell. On the fourth sublevel, we find the Flame of Tomorrow, the King of Sweets, and the Time Capsule. On the fifth and final sublevel, we fight Beady Longlegs, who, after using an ultra spicy spray, goes down without much trouble and drops the key. 
We also find the Rigo Diamond on this sublevel, then leave the Citadel of Spiders, having collected all 11 treasures and acquiring 874 Pokos. Now, at this point in the challenge, I thought that I had already collected every single treasure that I could without conscripting yellow and blue Pikmin. I figured now I would have to acquire the remaining 4,679 Pokos by collecting the corpses of enemies. The best cave to do this in, I reasoned, was the Citadel of Spiders. It's the closest cave to our base in the three areas we have unlocked at the moment, and it has a lot of enemies, to the point where I was averaging 70 Pokos per trip. So I begrudgingly accepted the fact that it would take me about 67 trips through the Citadel of Spiders to pay off the debt. I worked towards this for a few hours, acquiring approximately 1,200 more Pokos, until I got fed up and did some more research to see if it was possible to enter any other cave without the use of yellow or blue Pikmin. Then I found this unlisted playlist from 2015 that showcased the challenge I was currently undertaking. And apparently, by using the 5-man knapsack, it's possible to abuse the Pikmin's pathfinding AI to get into Glutton's kitchen without destroying the electric wall. After a handful of attempts, we're able to pull off this trick and manage to enter Glutton's kitchen without yellow Pikmin, turning the otherwise useless five-man knapsack into a time-saving and headache-reducing device. On the first sublevel of Glutton's kitchen, we find the Master's Instrument. On the second sublevel, we find the Happiness Emblem and the Imperative Cookie. On the third sublevel, we find the Director of Destiny and the Harmonic Synthesizer. On the fourth sublevel, we find the Massive Lid and the Invigorator, but are unable to obtain the White Goodness as we don't have any Yellow Pikmin to toss up to it. On the fifth sublevel, we find the Boom Cone and the Sulking Antenna. On the sixth and final sublevel, we face off against the Giant Bread Bug and collect the Dream Material, the Sweet Dreamer, the Hideous Vittle, and the Meat of Champions. We leave Glutton's Kitchen having collected 13 of the 14 treasures and acquiring 1,281 Pokos. Upon returning to the surface, we have our Pikmin start working on this poison wall as well as the mode that suffocates the burgeoning spider wart plants. Once the mode is taken care of, the Pikmin build this bridge, then start harvesting ultra bitter berries. Once the poison wall is felled, we have our white Pikmin carry the impediment scourge back to the ship. After that arrives, we start making trips through the Citadel of Spiders for the rest of the day. Eventually, the day ends and we blast off, having acquired 3,920 Pokos today. On day 7, we return to the perplexing pool in order to keep making trips into the Citadel of Spiders. Even though we get more Pokos per trip through Glutton's Kitchen, those enemies are much more obnoxious to kill, and it's a real pain having to do the five-man knapsack glitch every time. So we stick to painting the walls of the Citadel of Spiders with the blood of the innocent. And after many, many, many trips, we finally acquire our 10,000th Poco and get to go home. Having successfully paid off the debt with only 35 Pikmin, the absolute fewest number possible, all while dealing with the overpopulation that the Citadel of Spiders was clearly dealing with. And while it is possible to get to the Emergence Cave using the same five-man knapsack trick that got us into Glutton's Kitchen, we don't have the five-man knapsack until we've already sprouted 35 Pikmin, rendering the point moot. However, we're not done yet. Louie didn't come home with Olimar, and there's still treasure to get. And in case you're wondering just how much wildlife Olimar and Louie killed during their trips through the Citadel of Spiders, by the end of the game I had killed 237 Shearwigs, 401 Anode Beetles, 113 Swooping Snitch Bugs, 145 Fiery Dweevils, 102 Yellow Wallywogs, 181 Skitter Leaves, 148 Water Dumples, and 86 Hermit Cromads. Quite a bit. At this point, the President, an awful, cowardly, gluttonous, greedy capitalist, under the guise of rescuing Louie, joins Captain Olimar in the continued destruction of this strange world, where 141 treasures remain. Day 8 has us once again returning to the perplexing pool, this time to conscript some yellow Pikmin. However, we're not going to simply whistle them as you would in a casual playthrough. See, eventually we're going to need to turn all our Pikmin into purple Pikmin in order to carry back a treasure. However, in order to prevent a Pikmin extinction that would cause the onion to sprout one extra Pikmin, we need to glitch the yellow onion and prevent it from being able to sprout additional Pikmin. The way we do this is by using the same five-man knapsack pathfinding oversight to get into the area by the yellow onion, then pushing a lone yellow Pikmin into a nearby patch of grass, where it begins picking the grass. After the grass is picked, the yellow Pikmin will join our group. From there, we go to the third sublevel of the Citadel of Spiders and have a swooping snitch bug plant our yellow Pikmin so we can pluck it, causing a glitched version of the introduction cutscene to play. After this is done, we leave the Citadel of Spiders, where we see the yellow onion has moved over to our base. While it can store our yellow Pikmin no problem, it can't sprout additional yellow Pikmin, 
even in the event of a Pikmin extinction. So to sprout more yellow Pikmin, we'll have to use Queen Candy Pop Buds, also found on the third sublevel of the Citadel of Spiders. After three trips, we have a total of 25 yellow Pikmin, which is all we'll need to collect the remaining treasures. And in case you're wondering why this glitch works, I have no idea. I just learned about it from the unlisted playlist and this article from the Pikipedia. All that matters is that it does work. For that matter, I don't even know if this glitch works on the GameCube version of Pikmin 2. After sprouting our 25 yellow Pikmin, we flower them, then have them start working on the electric gate by Glutton's Kitchen as our other Pikmin harvest berries. Once the gate falls, we enter Glutton's Kitchen and collect the white goodness, the last treasure in that cave. Upon returning to the surface, we have our yellow Pikmin start to carry the gherkin gate back to the ship. However, the day ends before the treasure gets back and we blast off having acquired 60 Pocos today and sprouting 25 Pikmin. And as we blast off, we get to see another side effect of the Onion glitch. The Yellow Onion doesn't join us in lower orbit. Day 9 sees us returning to the Awakening Wood, our goal to conscript some blue Pikmin. You can also see the glitch Yellow Onion act up in the morning as well. It's so silly. Using an ultra spicy spray, we take out these two cloaking baronets, then start destroying this electric gate. Once the gate falls, we use ultra bitter sprays on the wog poles that the blue Pikmin are attacking, then the pellet posies. This causes the blue Pikmin to sit still, allowing us to push them to the nearest patch of grass, which, unfortunately, is right by the ship. It takes the better part of the day, but eventually the blue Pikmin join our ranks after all the grass has been plucked. We return to the third sub-level in the Snaggart Hole in order to have a swooping snitch bug plant our blue Pikmin, causing the same glitch that happened in the Citadel of Spiders to occur. With that done, now neither the yellow nor the blue onion will sprout a new Pikmin if and when an extinction occurs. We once again return to the Snaggart Hole, this time using the Queen Candy Pop Buds on the 6th and 7th sublevels to turn one red Pikmin into nine blue Pikmin each time, as well as collect the Stupendous Lens and Science Project on the 6th sublevel, completing that cave. After returning to the surface, we put one red Pikmin into the Red Onion, then make one last trip to the Snaggart Hole to sprout 16 more blue Pikmin. With our remaining time, we have our Pikmin start to carry the Healing Cask back to the ship. However, the day ends before it arrives and we blast off, having acquired 140 Pocos and sprouting 41 Pikmin, bringing the total to 101, which is all the Pikmin we'll need to collect every treasure. Day 10 has us returning to the Awakening Wood. We start by having a few Pikmin finish carrying the healing cask to the ship, then take our blue Pikmin and have them carry the air break. Once that gets back, we start carrying the decorative goo. As that's being carried, we begin bringing down the electric gate by the Bulblax Kingdom. Eventually, both the decorative goo makes it back to the ship and the electric gate is destroyed, and we enter the Bulblax Kingdom. On the first sublevel, we find the Crystal Clover. On the second sublevel, we find the Tear Stone. On the third sublevel, we find the Olimar Knight Shell. On the fourth sublevel, we find the Unknown Merit and the Crystal King. On the fifth sublevel, we find the Anxious Sprout. On the sixth sublevel, we find the Eternal Emerald Eye and the Colossal Fossil. On the seventh and final sublevel, we kill the Emperor Boblax with the help of an Ultra Spicy and Ultra Bitter Spray. He drops the Forged Courage, then we collect the Gyroid Bust. We leave the Bulblax Kingdom, having collected all 10 treasures and acquiring 1,282 Pocos. With the Bulblax Kingdom completed, we have done everything we have to do in the Awakening Wood. We go to Sunset, having acquired 1,522 Pocos today. On day 11, we venture to the Valley of Repose once more. We have our blue Pikmin work on this white wall while our white Pikmin excavate the Pink Menace. After the wall is destroyed, the blue Pikmin break this rock and drain the water. The Pink Menace makes it back to the ship, and after exterminating all nearby fauna, the Blue Pikmin work on this bridge. With it built, we have our White Pikmin start on the poison wall that blocks the subterranean complex. Meanwhile, we build the bridge that allows us to reach the Frontier Cavern, then kill the Armored Cannon Beetle Larva and start carrying the Unspeakable Wonder back to the ship. It arrives, and soon after the poison wall is felled, allowing us to enter the subterranean complex. On the first sublevel, we find the Nouveau Table and the Exhausted Super Stick. On the second sublevel, we find the Network Main Brain and the Spirit Flogger. On the third sublevel, we find the Coiled Launcher, the Super Strong Stabilizer, and the Omega Flywheel. The fourth sublevel is a rest floor where we find an Ultra Spicy Spray. By pushing an inactive captain into the spray, then running into the spray with the active captain, we can turn one spray into two. It's an incredibly helpful exploit, even in a normal playthrough. On the fifth sublevel, we find the Adamantine Girdle and the Mystical Disc. 
On the sixth sublevel, we find the Space Wave Receiver, the Repair Juggernaut, and the Vacuum Processor. On the seventh sublevel, we find the Indomitable CPU, the Thirst Activator, and the Furious Adhesive. The eighth sublevel is another rest floor, and we find an Ultra Bitter Spray. On the ninth and final sublevel, we fight the Man at Legs, who goes down quite easily after using both an Ultra Spicy and Ultra Bitter Spray. He drops the Stellar Orb, and we leave the Subterranean Complex. Having collected all 16 treasures and acquiring 1,000 564 Pocos. Our next objective for today is to complete the final cave in the Valley of Repose, the Frontier Cavern. On the first sublevel, we find the Essential Furnishing and the Essence of Rage. On the second sublevel, we find the Icon of Progress and the Joy Receptacle. On the third sublevel, we find the Danger Chime, the Fleeting Art Form, and the Gem Star Husband. On the fourth sublevel, we find the Innocence Lost and the Omniscient Sphere. On the fifth sublevel, we find the Brute Knuckles. On the sixth sublevel, we find the Worthless Statue and the Priceless Statue. You. On the seventh sublevel, we find the Spouse Alert and the Flame Tiller. On the eighth and final sublevel, we fight the Empress Bowblax for a second time and collect the Repugnant Appendage. We leave the Frontier Cavern, having collected all 15 treasures and acquiring 1,532 Pocos. Finally, we take our yellow and white Pikmin and have them start carrying back the fossilized Ursidae. It doesn't make it back to the ship, but they did their best and that's all that really matters. We blast off, having acquired 3,316 Pocos today. Day 12 is a nice, easy day. All it sees us doing is collecting the remaining above-ground treasures in the Valley of Repose. We start by carrying the fossilized Ursidae the rest of the way to the ship. Then we have our white Pikmin excavate the spiny alien tree and have that carried back to the ship. Afterwards, we trick the fiery Bulblax into extinguishing itself, which allows us to use an Ultra Bitter Spray and easily kill it with our blue Pikmin. It drops the Temporal Mechanism, which we carry back, then end the day. We blast off, having collected every treasure to be found within the Valley of Repose, and acquiring 320 Pocos. On our 13th day, we go to the Perplexing Pool. We have our blue Pikmin work on this black wall, and have our yellow Pikmin work on this electric gate. Then we carry back the Gherkin Gate, and have the rest of our Pikmin harvest berries. Once the electric gate is destroyed, we take our yellow Pikmin and have them work on the bridge by the shower room. The Gherkin Gate gets back to the ship as we do this. When the black wall is destroyed, we toss five white Pikmin up on this ledge, then have them start digging up the onion replica as our blue Pikmin clear the area of all dangerous fauna. Having completed the bridge, we have our yellow Pikmin work on their second electric gate of the day, then have our blue Pikmin kill the toady bloister and carry the aquatic mine back to the ship. We throw our white Pikmin back to safety as the aquatic mine arrives at the ship, then have our blue Pikmin carry both the onion replica and the optical illusion. After both are brought back, we collect all our Pikmin and bring them over to the shower room, which we enter after our blue Pikmin drain the area. On the first sublevel, we find the Merciless Extractor. On the second sublevel, we find the Durable Energy Cell and the Sug Generator. On the third sublevel, we find the Scrumptious Shell, the Mirrored Lid, and the Vorpal Platter. On the fourth sublevel, we find the Arboreal Frippery. On the fifth sublevel, we find the Pondering Emblem, the Endless Repository, and the Broken Food Master. On the sixth sublevel, we find the Abstract Master masterpiece, the Rubber Ugly, and the Behemoth Jaw. On the seventh and final sublevel, we encounter the Ranging Bloister and kill it using deceit and trickery that would make Sun Tzu blush and Kara Von Clauswitz cringe. It drops the Amplified Amplifier, which we collect, then leave the shower room, having collected all 14 treasures and acquiring 1,324 Pocos. With the remainder of the day, we flower our Pikmin, then blast off, having acquired 1,674 Pocos today. Day 14 has us return to the Perplexing Pool in order to finish things up. We have our blue Pikmin start working on this black wall, while, unsurprisingly, the rest of our Pikmin start harvesting berries. With the wall destroyed, we clear out the area, then solve this frustrating scale puzzle and start carrying back the massage girdle. Once the massage girdle makes it back to land, we take our blue Pikmin off and enter the notorious submerged castle. Now, I've been kind of skimming over the caves in this game, as they're randomly generated and are pretty indistinguishable from each other. However, the submerged castle is an outlier, so I figure it's worth talking about. This cave is the only place where you'll find the Water Wraith, an unspeakably spooky dude that spawns after spending five minutes on the first four sublevels. Also, the music's just scary. Gary.
It's a pretty stressful cave, especially considering we only had 45 blue Pikmin, but I never actually encountered the fella during my time spelunking. Anyway, on the first sublevel we find the bug bait, the diet doomer, and the pastry wheel. On the second sublevel we find the comfort cookie, the confection hoop, and the chocolate cushion. It's worth noting that we encounter Bulbman on both this sublevel and the next. This is the only time we encounter them when we have less than 100 Pikmin with us, meaning that we actually have the ability to obtain juvenile Bulbman. I made sure not to do this. I don't know what whether or not they would count as additional Pikmin for the sake of this challenge, and I figured my best bet was to just ignore them. Feel free to discuss what the semantics of me using Bulbman would have hypothetically been. Anyway, on the third sublevel we find the succulent mattress, the activity arouser, and the compelling cookie. There's an ivory candy pop bud here that you definitely want to use. I foolishly didn't, and it made the fourth sublevel much harder than it had to be. On the fourth sublevel we find the drone supplies, the proton double A, and the pale passion. Due to the poison generators and my lack of white Pikmin, I was only able to collect all the treasures on this floor due to this volatile dweevil. Absolute shad behavior. On the fifth and final sublevel, we turn 10 of our blue Pikmin purple and kill the water wraith no problem. Then collect the professional noisemaker and leave the submerged castle, having collected all 13 treasures and acquiring 690 pokos. With the remainder of the day, we bring back the massage girdle, then excavate the fortified delicacy and carry that back. We end the day, having acquired 850 Pocos and sprouting 10 purple Pikmin. On day 15, we venture to the Wistful Wild for the first time. After killing a few enemies, we enter the Cavern of Chaos. On the first sublevel, we find the Enamel Buster and the Mirth Sphere. On the second sublevel, all the treasures are unfortunately inside Fiery Bulblaxes, which we have no way to deal with at the moment. We'll be back for them later. On the third sublevel, we find the Inferno Vegetable and the Child of the Earth. On the fourth sublevel, we find the Mysterious Remains and the Milk Tub. The fifth sublevel is a rest floor, which we just bypass. On the sixth sublevel, we find the Princess Pearl and the Grosh Room. On the seventh sublevel, we find the Impenetrable Cookie and the Fuel Reservoir. On the eighth sublevel, we find the Fruit Guard. On the ninth sublevel, we find the Wiggle Noggin and the Materno Sculpture. On the tenth and final floor, we fight the Segmented Crabster and obtain the Silencer, then leave the Cavern of Chaos, having collected 14 of the 17 treasures and acquiring 1,807 Pokos. After returning to the surface, we kill this Gatling Groink, then re-enter the Cavern of Chaos in order to despawn its body. Gatling Groinks, along with bull bears, eventually come back to life after they die. Normally, you would carry them back to the ship or an onion, but because we can't sprout any more Pikmin, we have to enter then exit a cave to get rid of the military-grade pest. We have our blue Pikmin build this bridge, then have our white Pikmin start destroying this poison wall. We kill all these enemies, then start carrying the armored nut back to the ship. It makes it back, and we have our blue Pikmin work on this wall. Once the blue Pikmin have finished, we have them drain the water from the area. From there, we have our yellow Pikmin work on this electric gate, as our white Pikmin work on the second poison wall, and the remainder of our Pikmin harvest berries. The yellow Pikmin finish their work right at the end of the day, and we blast off having acquired 1,867 Pokos today. On day 16, we return to the Awakening Wood in order to turn a few of our Pikmin red so we can get the remaining treasures in the Cavern of Chaos. We accomplish this by going to the Bulblax Kingdom, where there's one Crimson Candy Pop butt on the first sublevel and two on the sixth sublevel. We leave the Bulblax Kingdom, having turned 15 of our blue Pikmin red. What we do for the rest of the day is harvest more berries. Eventually, the day ends and we blast off, having sprouted 15 more red Pikmin. Our our 17th day sees us returning to the Wistful Wild. The first thing on our agenda is to return to the Cavern of Chaos and go to the second sublevel in order to collect the Gemstar Wife, the Essence of Despair, and the Frosty Bauble. With those in our possession, we go down to the fifth sublevel and leave the Cavern of Chaos via Geyser. After returning to the surface, we kill these enemies, then carry both the Anti-Hiccup Fungus and the Seed of Greed back to the ship, and find an Ultra Bitter Spray along the way. Once both treasures make it back, we carry the Conifer Spire back to the ship as well. With that back, we enter the Hole of Heroes, the longest cave in the game. On the first sublevel, we find the Corpulent Nut. On the second sublevel, we find the Essence of True Love. On the third sublevel, we find the Love Sphere. On the fourth sublevel, we fight another Pileated Snagger and collect the Lustrous Element. The fifth sublevel is a boring rest floor where we find an Ultra Spicy Spray. On the sixth sublevel, we find the Nutrient Silo. On the seventh sublevel, we fight another Ranging Bloister and collect the Joyless Jewel. The eighth sublevel is yet another boring rest floor which we completely ignore. On the ninth sublevel, we find the Dimension. Slicer. On the 10th sublevel, we fight another Emperor Bulblax and collect the treasured Gyro Block. On the 11th sublevel, we fight our third 
Empress Bowblax and collect the favorite gyro block. On the 12th sublevel, we find the Lost Gyro block as well as an Ultra Spicy and Ultra Bitter Spray. On the 13th sublevel, we fight another Man at Legs and collect the Memorable Gyro block. On the 14th sublevel, we fight another Beady Long Legs and collect the Fong Gyro block. On the 15th and final sublevel, we fight the Raging Long Legs and collect the Remembered Old Buddy. We leave the Hole of Heroes having collected all 13 treasures and acquiring 2,381 Pokos. Upon returning to the surface, we spend a bit of the day harvesting berries before we tackle the final cave in the game, the Dream Den. On the first sublevel, we find the Disguised Delicacy. On the second sublevel, we find the Manual Honer and the Implement of Toil. On the third sublevel, we find the Glee Spinner. On the fourth sublevel, we find the Mirrored Element. On the fifth sublevel, we find the Insect Condo. On the sixth sublevel, we find the Future Orb. On the seventh sublevel, we find the Essence of Desire. On the eighth sublevel, we find the Possessed Squash and the Extreme Perspirator. The ninth sublevel is a boring rest floor, but we do find two Ultra Bitter Sprays. On the tenth sublevel, we find the Talisman of Life. On the 11th sublevel, we find the Yellow Taste Tyrant and the Boss Stone. On the 12th sublevel, we find the Stringent Container and the Universal Calm. On the 13th sublevel, we find the Hypnotic Platter. On the 14th and final sublevel, we find Louie, who's sitting atop the Titan Dweevil, the final boss of Pikmin 2. By using our yellow Pikmin, the Pikmin immune to the only insta-kill hazard in the game, and attacking the monster pump first, we can easily defeat the beast and collect the King of Bugs, the Shock Therapist, the Flare Cannon, the Comedy Bomb, and the Monster Pump. We leave the Dream Den having collected all 21 treasures and acquiring 6,165 Pokos. But more importantly, the Creepy Gourmet has been saved. Unfortunately, we're not done yet. There's one last treasure to obtain, the Doomsday Apparatus, which needs 100 purple Pikmin to carry. We blast off, having acquired 8,941 Pokos and saving our co-worker. On our penultimate day on this foreign planet, we return to the Valley of Repose. Our goal today is to turn all but one red Pikmin into purple Pikmin by using the violet candy pop buds found on the 8th sublevel of the subterranean complex. The reason we don't use the ones found in the Emergence Cave is that they don't spawn if you have more than 20 purple Pikmin. So instead we make 7 trips to the subterranean complex. And here here is where we see the practical application of glitching the yellow and blue onions. After all our blue and yellow Pikmin are turned purple, the Pikmin extinction cutscene happens, but no Pikmin are sprouted, allowing us to beat the game with 101 Pikmin, not 103, which would be the minimum if we activated the onions like normal and they were actually able to sprout Pikmin. We end the day and blast off, having turned all but a lone red Pikmin purple. Our final day has us rather anticlimatically collect the Doomsday Apparatus, our final treasure. With no need to desecrate this planet anymore, Olimar and the President blast off for good, having accomplished all their pillaging with only 101 Pikmin and zero deaths. This challenge was much harder and much longer than the Pikmin 1 challenge. Yes, a lot of this length came from me insisting on paying off the debt with only 35 Pikmin, a decision I'll defend in my grave, but Pikmin 2 is just a longer and harder game. It did, however, feel really great to beat this game with only 101 Pikmin, and pulling off the onion glitches made me feel pretty clever. However, due to how much of this game is just going through caves, it got pretty monotonous, as Pikmin shines as a puzzle-solving and time management game, not a dungeon crawler. The combat is much easier in this game due to Purple Pikmin being busted, but so many little things caused me to lose Pikmin and have to reset. Thank god the game saves after every sublevel in a cave. And then going through the Citadel of Spiders close to 50 times was an exercise in patience to say the very least. With that being said, my run of this game was far from perfect. A quick Google search shows this 101 Pikmin challenge can be beaten in 8 days, but I'm still happy that I completed the challenge in any capacity. And and I think I'm the first person to pay off the debt with only 35 Pikmin sprouted. Don't quote me on that though. But with all that being said, I obviously have to know how many Pikmin it takes to beat Pikmin 3 now. Take care.